Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac, and we are back playing some Blast Off for episode 9. And it feels like it's been a while since the last episode of Blast Off. It probably hasn't been that long, uh, probably only a couple of days, but it feels like it's been weeks since I was playing this mod pack. But uh, look at this. We have a brand new base. It is... Not, not the most attractive brand new base we've ever made in the world, but uh, I decided between episodes that I was fed up completely of this little bunker that we had. It was a pain trying to stay at the right temperature. Like, if we're here by the torch, it's too warm. If we go down into the basement, we're too cold. It's all cramped and dark and secluded. And I, I just didn't like it. I didn't like it one bit. We needed sunlight. It helps our sanity as well, I think. So I've gone ahead and made this kind of structure i guess is the only way i can describe it and i quite like it so far we've got all this glowstone glass which if we press f7 is doing a pretty good job i think there's a few slots uh, roundabout somewhere that are not doing too great on on the light levels but i think for the most part where we're, oh there we go you can see there's a couple of uh, a couple of spots that, uh, that do require a little bit more light but for the most part uh, stopping mobs spawning in here which is kind of awesome we have a little tree farm over there at the back of the tree farm i don't know if you can quite see that we have the crucible the stone barrel and our cobblestone generator that's just to try and keep the lava as far away from me as possible so that we don't like overheat all the time like we were doing down in the base and as you probably saw a second ago when i jumped up we have a ton of torches around us i was trying to make this place mob proof now I failed, because when night comes, you'll see that there are still a ton of zombies that managed to find their way out here. But for the most part, it is definitely uh, subdued. There were definitely less than there were before. And that's probably partly due to the fact that there was, like, a, a nice array of torture. Covering about 20 to, I think, 25 blocks around us, which is quite nice. Uh, you also notice I made a button more of these drying racks. For those who don't know what these do, these allow us to take our good old friends, the zombie brains, and then stick them on here like so, and they will slowly turn into monster meat, which we can then use. Can we take that back real quick? We can, because I think we need 16. Um, yeah, it slowly turns into monster meat. These ones, I think, are almost done. You can see at the top there, Will is telling us this one's 93.5% done. And once it's done, it becomes monster meat, which we can then eat without any sort of damage to our health, without getting hunger, without getting poisoned, any of that bad stuff, which is pretty nice, considering right now, we don't really have all that many food sources, which... It's not the best. We also got this. This is awesome. Look at this. We got uh, we leveled up our pickaxe, uh, and it now has uh, the, the the diamond effect on it. It has an extra 500 durability, which is uh, which is awesome because this thing didn't didn't have the best durability in the world. Actually, we weren't mining. Uh, as you can see, I've gutted a few spikes uh, nearby. Because uh, for those who don't know, copper tends to be in the middle of the spikes. I've found, and in order to complete uh, this quest, if we head on. Uh, into the questing book, which has, I think, got a few new quests, uh, and down to here. Yeah, this one required 16 copper, and for some reason, most of the copper is kind of centered towards the middle center of the tower. Uh, I don't know if that's, like, an actual thing, or if I'm just making it up, but that's why I found most of my copper, and, and that's why you can see the little, like, holes uh, in, the in, in the towers all around. And I kept having to come back and forth, making new obsidian, doing stuff like that, uh, because this guy ran out after probably about a few minutes on a tower, but uh, he's doing pretty well now. Since the diamond, I haven't had to refill it yet so things are, are looking good a bit of a, a visual glitch there with the uh with the tornado but that's fine and as you'll see we have ourselves some monster meat still having a bit of a, a sfax glitch there not quite sure what that's about but we can go ahead and eat that and oh look at this mm. gotta love yourself some monster meat um, we're on full health. We've got all that saturation. It is flipping brilliant. I apologize if you hear the Skype noises in the background. Uh, flipping, flipping Skype. Okay, so what I want to do today is I want to get started on... Well, first of all, I think we can complete this quest. 16 cobblestone. We've got 12 here. Uh, we did use a butt ton to try and get this stuff. But uh, what we can go ahead and do is we can go ahead and sort of navigate right around over to here. And grab ourselves a few more pieces. There's a, there's a new mod that's been added, or a new function that's been added to some mod that makes it so the blocks sort of like keep their their damage value. Which for things like uh, cobblestone or the ores, like the pickaxe bricks, I love. But for the hardened clay and the wood, I really don't because it means if I sit here and try and mine consistently, it will. You can see the cobblestone, the wood, the wood behind it's still broken, which means it doesn't really act as a very nice buffer. So, a uh, bit of a pain, but what we can do now is we can go ahead, manually submit, and we can claim our reward. So, let's go and dump some stuff uh, over in these chests first. I also figured out how these drawers work, so I can uh, tell, you, tell you about that in a second. Let's get rid of a few of you. We got some more emeralds, which is quite nice. Uh, camel pack, we should probably put on. Uh, I think we're doing more water at first. Uh, okay, mystery egg or spider egg? I'll go with a mystery egg. 
This reject sounds amazing. Uh, we also get an octodaic capacitor. Nice. So we can go ahead and throw that into the uh, the generator downstairs if we want to. And uh, generate some more power. And get a bit more bang for our buck when it comes to things like coal and such. Which would be very nice. Uh, we've got some meteor chips when I picked up the, uh, the, the meteor collector. I think that's like, just like what it does. It just accumulates uh, meteor chips over time. And there was one other quest that I want to go ahead and complete. And that's this one here. This one also requires 16 zombie brains. So let's manually submit those. That's why I took a few down earlier on. And now we get some pretty cool rewards. We get a shell constructor, some treadmills, a robot, robot, a robot maybe, and a charge pad, as well as a pink derp or a white derp. So we'll take, we'll take white derps. Why not? Uh, so we can throw down our treadmill. I mean, I don't think we're really going to need this. This would be a lot more effective if we were playing on hardcore, which we are not. So, like I said, not really uh, too effective. And that was uh, placed down completely wrong. You're supposed to place it down like that. Uh, it is a cool mod that I love the way you get power from this. I wish, uh, basically, the way you get power is you're supposed to put, uh, sort of push mobs onto this, like pigs or wolves. I think cows might work as well. But uh, basically, you're supposed to push mobs onto these treadmills and have them run and produce power. I think that is an absolutely fantastic way of producing power. I wish there was like a, uh, a generator that produced redstone flux where you could just stick a pig on here and it just run and produce like five redstone flux per tick. It'd be awesome. I, I, that'd be fantastic. Come on, get on it, thermal expansion or extra utility. Someone needs to make that. <laughs> All right, so we got that. And like I said, we got all these cool things. So, uh, this guy, this Robert, I actually had a quick look uh, in a single player world at what this guy does. And he is pretty freaking awesome. So, if we were to go ahead and throw down uh, the charging pad somewhere. I'll throw it down like over here for now. Like that looks pretty nice. And this guy can sit on the charging pad. Uh, and you'll see he'll sort of start to charge up. And uh, not quite sure... If the charging pad, I think the charging pad needs power to work, and this guy will need obviously power to run. But for now, he has a hundred, a uh, hundred thousand, hundred thousand joules, hundred kilojoules. And basically, what you can do is you can craft, you can store stuff, you can use them as a furnace, and you can use them as an anvil, which is pretty freaking awesome. And you can toggle follow mode on, so you can see following turns to true. So now he will follow us around. Which is pretty freaking awesome. So we can just be wandering around. Uh, you'll start to see some mobs spawn in a bit. But we'll just be wandering around, mining at the, uh, the pillow or something. And then we'll turn around and we're like, oh, got too much stuff in our inventory. And that's fine. We can come in here. We can do that. We can just like go ahead and just dump all of our stuff into Robert. And there's an explosion over there. Like that. Turn around. Keep mining. Come back. Oh, we need to craft a new pickaxe. Oh, my gosh. Okay, here we go. This thing is flipping awesome. I love it already. I haven't even used it yet. And I already love it. I think it's a fantastic idea. The uh, the smell tree and the anvil especially. We don't even have an anvil. So this uh, this is really nice. Thank you, Mr. Robert. Uh, I would like you to, uh, to go back to uh, to the platform if you wouldn't mind you can see zombies already trying to uh, trying to penetrate my walls uh, originally they did manage to get over the uh, ooh we can uh, charge <laughs> originally they did manage to get over that so i had to put like walls all the way up around that building but I don't think they can do it anymore. I'll turn follow mode off for him for now. Uh, rename this Robert. Toggle drop pickup mode. And teleport back home. There we go. Uh, okay, so we have the ability to rename this Robert. In the comment section, tell me what you think we should name this Robert. Because I am, I want to give it a name. Uh, so tell me in the comment section, I'll pick one. And we'll rename him for episode 10. Uh, episode 10 will be a world download as well, by the way, guys. So you can also look forward to that. Now, what I want to get onto today. I want to get some actual stuff done today. Unlike last episode, where we kind of just listened to battle music. I want to start with this one here. Floral fertilizer. So, uh, in order to make a floral fertilizer, we need 10 of this stuff, which is, is kind of insane. But in order to make 10 of this stuff, it's actually not all that bad. So, if you have a look, floral fertilizer is this stuff up here, and it's made. Come on. Oh, okay. Okay, so we, we, we crashed a little bit there. That's fine. So this time, we will try to click on the right thing. We're going to make floral fertilizer. And in order to make this, all you need is some bone meal, two dandelion yellow, and two rose red, or some bone meal and some floral powder from Britannia, which we don't quite have yet, but we will have plenty of fairly soon. So to start with, like I said, two dandelion yellow and two rose red. Now, do we happen to have any, any flowers lying around? We have one dandelion there. And that's about it. Okay, on the bright side, we do have, I think, quite a bit of bone and bone meal. Yeah, we do. We can go ahead and do something like this. Or we could try that again and do something like this. Get ourselves 21 bone meal. And I think if we were to use the watering can on the grass downstairs in the old base, we should get some flowers to grow. Now, we could also use bone meal as well. That does that does work. But I'm thinking that if we want to save the bone meal to be able to craft the, uh, the floral fertilizer, we should... And you can see there's still a butt ton of zombies. I think it's uh, the zombie awareness mod that's sort of attracting them to us, even if they spawn quite far away. But if we go ahead and do something like this, I think we actually get some, some flowers, maybe? 
Am I, uh, am I kidding myself here, or is this, like, actually a thing? Maybe lying to myself. Uh, on the bright side, we do have our unlimited water sauce back, so we can sit here and do this all day long. And, oh my gosh, it's amazing. We can just fill up on water and just drink for days. I'm, not, I'm still not sure if this is a glitch or not. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, let's try this instead, then. Let's just go ahead and uh, bomb me all the grass. Ooh, what do we get? What's that? Mystery seed. Oh, okay. That's that's new, I guess. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering why there were saplings here in another watering can, the, um, the, 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 uh, the spatial storage units reset in, in one of the updates. But on the bright side, look at this. Boom, we got ourselves some, some nice red flowers. So we can go ahead and do something like that. We can do something like that. We do need one more of each of those. Because I'm pretty sure I just got uh, a second thingamajig. There it is. Let's take, uh, let's get rid of da -da -da, walls. We don't need walls. That's two of you. Oh, no, I just saw, oh, that was just my FOV going back from the uh, enhanced FOV. Oh, look at that. There we go. Extra flowers. Nice, nice. We'll take those. Do something like that. And we should now be able to craft this up. So I'm going to head back upstairs. Before you come back down here and, and get a few more of those in a bit anyway. But for now, we can kind of go back to our crafting station and make our first set of floral fertilizer, which goes something like this. Boom. Uh, was it like this? It was. I guess it's one floral fertilizer. We need 10 of these. Now, that sounds a little bit insane because that's quite a few of them. However, on the bright side, what we could do is we can head on back down. And if we were to use this floral fertilizer that we just got here on our grass. And I'm going to clear out these saplings as well just to get that bit extra space. Try and get as much as we can out of this stuff. Uh, if I was to do something like this... We get a bunch of Batania flowers, which is actually quite nice. So I kind of feel like we should dump some stuff uh, in the inventory real quick. And also check if our zombie jerky is actually ready to be eaten because we are getting pretty hungry. And yeah, look at this. Mm, lovely, lovely meat jerky. It is, it is fantastic. Here we go. Take all that. When day dawns, we can run outside again. Oh my gosh, look at these guys. We can run outside again and, and grab all that stuff uh, if needs be. I'll throw that helmet on. I mean, it's probably going to increase our heat uh, a little bit, which is not really great, but uh, but it's fine. It's fine. So let's head on downstairs. Let's grab some of those flowers. And what we can do once we've got those flowers is we can turn those into the uh, the floral dust that we tried to craft. Uh, well, that we clicked on a second ago and crashed. We can, we can actually craft it and then use that to make some more floral fertilizer and kind of progress from there, which will be pretty freaking nice. Nice. So, in order to do that, we should probably bring a uh, crafting table down here uh, at some point, just so we can craft whilst we're down there using the uh, spatial storage stuff. We could, if we really wanted to bring the spatial storage up here. It'd be a bit of a pain, because I'd have to move it and, and reconstruct it, but we could do it. It is possible. Uh, let's grab the bone meal, and all you have to do, I believe, is craft these up to get petals, like this. And then, in order to turn them into the dust, we need a pestle and mortar, which I think... It's just a ball, a stick, and a plank. I'm actually going to try and make this uh, without looking at the recipe. And, oh yeah, look at this. We managed to get this to work. So, in each one of these four slots on the oak drawers, we can hold up to 128 of any item. You can see that we have uh, 128 hardened clay in this slot, 125 hardened clay in this slot. Uh, sorry, 25 hardened clay in this slot. This one, I'm not quite sure how much wood this top slot can hold, because this is a compacting drawer. But uh, right now, we have 66 planks, uh, so, or 66 logs, sorry, uh, stored in that top section there, which uh, is pretty nice. It's pretty nice. So, let's try this. We're going to make a stick. I think it's a stick. A ball and a piece of wood, if I'm not mistaken. Something like this. Yeah, there we go. That gets us a pestle and mortar. And then we can go ahead and just craft these things up into their respective dusts. And then we can do something like this. We can put the bomb meal in and we can go boom, boom. That gets us one. We can go boom, boom. That gets us another one. And the cool thing is that we can now head back downstairs, rinse and repeat, get ourselves a bunch more flowers. Probably about four more uh, per per floral uh, fertilizer here, which is pretty nice. We can do this. That got us a few more. I think these are, by the way, different dandelions. I think these do work with Batania. We'll take you, 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 and you. We'll take all these. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And again, we can kind of just do this. Grab two of you. Do this. Grab eight of you. Jeez. Do that. Grab a few more of you. And that gets us, what, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve of those, which will make us three more sets of floral fertilizer. So what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go ahead and rinse and repeat this a couple of times until we have ten floral fertilizer. And I'll be back in a second. Okay. And a little while later, we can go ahead and do something like this. And we got ten fertilizer. Nice. So we'll go ahead and hand that in. Uh, done and... Is that going to 
up there. Oh, let's pick one. Okay, grass block, slimy grass, or infected grass. I think we're going to take a grass block for the simple reason that I would like to set up a, um, a farm out here. And I don't know of any other way to actually get grass seeds so that we can have grass spread. And we don't actually have anything with silk touch, so we can't get anything. We can't grab some of that grass from downstairs. So I'm going to take this one for now and hold on to it. We also get this guy here, the Lexa Britannia, which tells us of the 148th edition. And this thing will tell us everything we want to know about Britannia. So, what's up next in the quest book? Uh, it's kind of the next step in Britannia. The quest book kind of walks us through it as well. And for this, we get two mystical white flowers and a seed, which I didn't know. I know where it's going, and that's why I've kept hold of uh, these two mystical white flowers here. But it turns out we didn't have to, because it's going to give us some more anyway. But the petal, the petal apothecary is actually not all that hard to make. If we have a look here, the petal apothecary is actually fairly easy. Please don't crash. No. Okay, so we crashed again a little bit there, but that's fine. I'll go ahead and I know the recipe for the Petal Apothecary. It looks something like this. Boom, boom, boom. And we get something like this. The Petal Apothecary. Nice. So, we can go ahead and throw this down wherever we want. I think for now we'll throw it somewhere like that. And then the first thing that we need to do is fill this guy up with some water. So, whereabouts is our bucket? Slash, do we have a bucket? We do. We even have one full of water. Nice. Let's have a look. Did that complete a quest? I think it might have done. Uh, let's look at getting started. Petal Apothecary. Done. Nice. We can claim that reward. And what we can do, and the reason it's given us two uh, of the white flowers and some seeds, is because we need to do something like this. Do they stack? Yeah, they do. Nice. So we can get two of those and take four of these. And then if we throw four of these into the Petal Apothecary, like this, if we press Q. One, two, three, four. Finish it up with some seeds. Ta-da! We get this guy here, the Pudese. Nice. And now, what we can do, is that a quest in itself? I think it is. It is. There we go. We can claim it while that gets us more floral fertilizer. Let me just do a quick refresh of the chunks, because it's a bit of a mess whenever we log on. And now, the next uh, the next set of stuff requires some living wood. Well, we get living wood as a reward, but I think we need living wood uh, in order to make a runic altar. And I'm pretty sure we need it in order to make some of this stuff uh, as well. You'll see we need a mana spreader and a mana pool. And the reason it's given us a day say, uh, is it says here, this particular plant seems to cause stone or logs placed in the 8x8 blocks around the flower to transform into living rock and living wood after a short time so all we have to do is grab some dirt we have some there actually we need, we need one dirt <clears throat> i said so we need one and what we'll do is for now I'll place it down like here uh, eventually i'll move it eventually i'll get like a little garden section where we can plant stuff and and have a full like we'll probably get like a pneumatic craft area going uh what what happened there i'm like slow oh hypothermia oh, come on come on we're just below, yeah, when we drop below 35 degrees Celsius over there uh, on the uh, the top right, we, we do get hypothermia. That should be fairly easy to rectify. If we go above 35, we will uh, we will again heat up and, and be back to normal. If we go above, I think it's 39. Yeah, so 37 is a nice spot. Below 35, so two below uh, is hypothermia. Anything above two above is, uh, is, is heat stroke. Uh, if we could stay up in that kind of nice mid four degree range that we've got, then we won't have either of those. So I'm going to try and run back and not get hypothermia before the episode ends. But what we can do now is we can go ahead and throw down our new found flower, which is this guy over here, the pure desert. Throw him down there. And then we can surround him with either wood, smooth stone, or a mixture of both. In this case, we are going to go with a mixture of both. We do have some more dirt up here. So starting a farm should be pretty easy. Uh, like I said, oh, say, come on, come on. We've got, do we, have, we have a torch. Here we go. Let's just... Let's just do that. Um, <laughs> do we have any smooth stone? I'm not too sure if we do. In fact, it doesn't look like we do. So, we'll, what, yeah, so what we'll do is we'll throw some of you in there. We'll grab like four of you. Uh, do we have any more cobblestone? And can we do this? And that was a terrible idea. No! Don't burn on me, please. Okay, we're going to have to use one of these for, for that. Let's, let's grab another one. Thank you. Uh, we don't need too many of these, to be fair. And I can always go ahead and get some more cobblestone, smelt it up between episodes. But just to quickly show you what this stuff does is, or what this flower does, should I say, is you could surround it with stone or oak wood, like this, and it will slowly turn it. Actually, I'll, make it, I'll, I'll fill it up like this. Why not? And it will slowly turn it into a living wood or living stone. Let's quickly go to sleep here real quick. I think the night might be affecting our, uh, our temperature uh, a little bit. So we'll sleep. Probably being near the walls as well. I think the torches outside are kind of heating us up as well. So if we get if we get too cold, we can always push up against the walls. But uh, I think it takes about about sixty seconds exactly for for this transformation to take place. But what we should see 
any second now is is that living wood uh well that wood and that stone turning into living wood and living stone that we can then use to make some of the other stuff in the pack i'm not going to show you the recipes because I'm, i fear it will crash again uh, i think that's a bug that i'm going to have to report and then try and figure out hopefully it gets fixed before before next episode uh, i will do a world download for episode 10 so if you wanted to get this uh, awesomely cool new base that we've got uh, then you can get it next episode. And the lumber axe that we got actually last episode has been working really well. Uh, a lot of the wood that I got for the floor was from the lumber axe, which is absolutely lovely. We don't have to go, uh, we don't have to even try and cut down trees. It's it's fantastic. But uh, come on, come on. Let me prove my point. Let me uh, show this off. Show off some cool shizwiz. This stuff down here, flowers that generate mana. Mana is needed to power pretty much everything in Britannia. And one of the really core cool things about Britannia that you can do is you actually generate ores using Britannia, which is going to come in super useful because I don't want to be mining these sphere, these like spikes for the rest of my life. But if we go ahead and have a look, look at this, boom. We now have some living wood. Again, I'll probably grab... Uh, actually, what we could do is we could go ahead and grab, I think, the lumber axe. Uh, if it's not a tree, if it doesn't detect a tree, what it'll do is it'll just break like a 3x3 three three area around it of wood, I think. So if we were to say grab you and then do something like this, I think it should in fact pick all of the living wood up. Or just destroy my floor. Is that the uh, mob spawning room? It is. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, let me, let me, let me fix that real quick. That, that, that almost worked, but, but the point is, this is how you make a living rock and a living wood. And what we'll do next episode is we'll probably move on a little bit further down the line of the Britannia route. Do a little bit more of this stuff. I'd like to get into some of the, um, the, I can't remember the name of the mod now. It's, uh, Flaxbeards. Flaxbeard Steelworks, maybe? I want to get into this. I have no idea how this mod works. That's why I haven't got into it just yet. Uh, I would like to set up some sort of mob spawner and hope that it works to try and get um, some of these quests done. And also get a much more reliable source of zombie brains because these are proving to be very nice uh, food sources for the, for the time being. And I would also like to get into some of the other ones as well because we do have things like pneumatic craft, like I said earlier. A uh, farm for that would be very nice. Uh, that would also help with bone meal as well. If we could get some of those uh, white seeds from pneumatic craft, we could get a bunch more bones. And then we've also got all of the other quests to do as well. There's like a flipping bazillion quests in this pack including the polluted sea stuff farming steve style which looks very interesting indeed pressurization which is the new matchcraft stuff industrial evolution which is what i really want to get into mechanism uh, and applied energistics and all that good stuff blast off moon exploration and then all of the other ones as well which are locked for the time being but i'm sure we will unlock it at some point in the future but for now guys thanks for watching if you did enjoy the video be sure to hit that like button and i will see you guys next time Bye bye